Hello, everybody. Do you want to oh. share where you're joining from? Which city, state, town, neighborhood? You can type in chat or you can unmute yourself. Hey, thank you, Srilata. Now I remember you. I think you've been joining all the sessions. Shweta, I remember you from Pune. Thank you again. Okay, another Sunita from Bangalore. Welcome. You should also write, Neha, where are you joining from? And with there, you too. And I should too. Mumbai. Hello, Yajna. I have only been to Mumbai once. Chennai, yes, with their Hyderabad, Bangalore, XYZ from Pune, Madhura from Mumbai, <laughs> because we all know she's from Mumbai, so we're not going to write it in chat. We were just checking where people are joining from. <laughs> You know, whenever whenever I have a, a, a little free slot, I try to get into the She Knows Money sessions. And, um, you know, but I realize that it is always Neha that we bump into. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to make sure that you you come in another ones as well. I know, um, right? I know. Yeah. I'm very happy. I think it's, I think it's absolutely fine, Madhura. I, have, I think that's great. <laughs> Hello, Shilpa, Rachna. Thank you for joining. So we're just checking who's from joining. Hi, Meghna. From UAE. Well done. Let's just give one more minute. So, Madhra, while you just joined, Neha, myself, and Vidya, we've just sort of um, almost decided that this year's International Women's Day is going to be super duper exciting. We're going to do some crazy yes. stuff. Yes. We're going to run it for the whole month. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Look forward. Okay. It's so nice to see um, Srilata and Rachna put their videos on. You know, it's always nice to have. Uh... Thank you. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I... It's always nice, nice to have faces to interact with. Uh... And many of them are, um, I mean, definitely Sri Lata has been joining I think a few of them because I absolutely remember um, Sri Lata's name, uh, a lot of questions. So thank you again for um, joining every session. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, this is something I guess I cannot miss. I have been joining all the sessions, in fact. That's so lovely, Shilita. That's so lovely. Shilata, that's so yeah. lovely. I mean, it's really useful, right? It's really good for women. And the way Anu and Neha has been conveying the things, right? It's like slowly building block by block. It's really good. And very soon, Anu and Neha will also reach out to you asking the question, so how much have you invested? How is your work <laughs> going? We need to yeah, just, yeah. We were just discussing that enough of learning. We need to get into execution. So, you know, stay tuned for 2023. We'll have lots of execution sessions where, you know, you'll be start to build your wealth. Okay. Yeah, okay. actually, I have started uh, questioning my spouse about why he did invest in this and what is the return? How did he plan his budget? What was the inflation rate he has considered, right? Outstanding. So, said, so this Outstanding. Year, that's a great. Madhura, yeah, this is great starting point. This is what? impact. This absolutely, is impact. absolutely. This is impact. I mean, more than impact, because I think that's the first step, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody else is doing it for you, then ask them, you know, 
what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Let's get started. We are five minutes past. Um, and as always, we always have a tight sort of schedule. So thank you again. A lot of people joined uh, as our sort of regular um, participants, and I can see some new names. So welcome all the new participants. Uh, and we also welcome you to the Aspire for Her community. You have to join the community before you come to the session. Um, so for the first time joiners, this is our fifth session since we launched. So um, today we um, are five weeks young um, since we launched on 4th of November. And, you know, we've talked about uh, how to start the conversations and the psychology of the uh, money, how to manage personal finance, um, you know, some rules around um, splitting your money in your, um, on your different expenses. And today we have um, our favorite, um, Neha Singh from Womanista back talking to us about rules of thumb. And we've also got um, two key members from her team, uh, Rachna and also Shilpa. And I think I'm doing very well on names today and I'm not confusing names. So I'm very glad about that. Um, so yeah, let's get started and learn some of the rules of thumb that uh, you know um, Neha has for us. But um, as we do, we have a tradition that we start with some icebreaker questions. So with there, we'll start with some icebreaker questions and we'll just get a feel of the room, you know, how are we feeling today around rules of thumb? Over to you, um, Vidya, do you want to put in some icebreaker, icebreaker questions? Yes, yes, as always. Can I show my thumb and say thumb rules? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely, thumb rules. You know, actually, this is a mudra, like, you know, money, this one? Right. I learned today if your money is blocked, then just do this like daily as a as a like a mudra activation. <laughs> That's a great tip, Simran. <laughs> okay, a happy evening to all of you, and uh, thank you for joining us again. So today the icebreaker question. So as uh, Simran said, the topic is going to be the uh, thumb rules right in managing your finances and uh, so let's see uh, the questions do you think it is important to budget for one time expenses please type in your responses in the chat box i'm also going to type this question in the chat box do you think it is important to budget for one time expenses Super. Okay. Very much, yes. Bring it in, people. We still need more answers. Yes. I think there is no uh, two ways of looking at it, right? Yes. And the next question, do you think you feel confident managing your money and making financial decisions? Do you think you feel confident in making money and uh, managing your money and making financial decisions? Vibali, don't worry. You will definitely be able to do it very soon. Partly, Sri Lata, not all time. Okay. Not always. Okay. To a certain extent. Mostly, sometime. So yes, the session is for all of us to, you know, do it wisely and be more confident. And I think next time when we ask this question, we are going to see a lot of yes coming up in the chat box. Yeah, so before we move on to the session, I quickly want to launch the polls. So please type in your, I mean, please select your answers. I request all of you to be on mute. Oh. 
Okay, so we the question is when it comes to money management, what is the biggest fear you have? So we have about seventy five percent of people saying fear of making wrong decisions, and uh, we have about twenty three percent of people saying fear of losing money. Okay, great. So without any delay, over to you, Neha. We are really looking forward for your wonderful session. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Um, so today's topic is actually extremely interesting. At the same time, very controversial as well. So, and I'll tell you how it's controversial. Okay. So for people who have been in the industry, anything which is saying thumb rules, there's always a little bit of hey, you know, but this is not ideal for everyone. So when I start anything to do with thumb rules, I just want to say that these are directional uh, ways in which you can look at measuring whether you're on the right path or not. But it's not a, a rule which applies to everybody in every circumstance. Right? So that's the first very important caveat for anything, wherever you read a thumb rule around money. Why we took this topic is that many times women approach me um, and they'll ask me very, very open-ended questions, right? How much insurance should I have? Uh, should I buy this car or not? Should what, you know, how can I grow my money, etc. So the intent is that with today's thumb rules, you might be able to get some answers which you can figure on your own and customize for your own needs. So let's get started a little bit about Womanista for anyone who's joining for the first time hasn't uh, come in earlier. Womanista is a platform which was launched in 2020 with the single focus to empower women to make their own financial decisions. We are on our journey. I think it's upwards of 7,000 plus thanks to the She Knows Money community and many other partnerships that we've done. Uh, apart from courses, we also do one-on-one -on -one consultations where you can come in, have a word with our experts. We open up exclusive um, you know, slots for the community. Um, and one of the very important things which we've observed is that almost 90% of women who've uh, worked with us came from non-finance background and they were first-time investors, which means that if you're carrying that little uh, bias or barrier in your mind that because you didn't, you're not good at math or because you didn't take commerce, etc., money is not your thing. Please drop that bias out. It has nothing to do with your good you're in math or what subjects you studied. Anyone can manage money if they know the tools and have the structure. Yeah. So with that, the objective of today's session is to get started with some easy, simple to follow rules. Use them like a ready reckoner. And like I said, the drawback, it's very important for me to say this upfront. It does not take into account each of your individual circumstances for that. It's always better to get in touch with someone who's working with you closely to build up your personalized plan. Okay, all set. I've put the caveats out. So let's get started now. Let's start with, so when, when we thought how, what kind of thumb rules should we talk about? The first thing that we thought were, what are the themes of our money? What are the ways in which money comes into our life, right? And everything that we're doing uh, with money revolves around these five personal finance spaces, right? I'm sure you'll agree. Either it has to do with budgeting or there would be some amount of borrowing. Uh, there would be insurance, investing, and of course, something we can't ignore, which is planning for my retirement. Yeah. So today we're going to do thumb rules across each of these themes to help you understand each of these themes a little better. Let's jump into the first one, which is budgeting. Okay. In my previous session, in the earlier session, we did talk about this. The first rule is to put your emergency fund together. How much emergency fund should I have? Now, one of the common things which you might come across is to put together six months of your monthly income. I personally suggest don't look at this from an income perspective, look at this from an expense perspective to get an optimum result. Why? Because if there is some sort of a crisis like a job loss, 
the first thing that you want to secure is not going to be your fancy enjoyment expense. It's going to be the mainstay expenses, the fixed expenses. If you're on rent or you're paying for groceries or you have a child whose education you pay for, etc. So the first thing that you want to secure are your expenses, one. Also, you don't want to be, you know, always preparing for emergencies. You don't want to have too much sitting in an emergency fund, which is not earning you enough return. So that's another reason why not starting from income, but from expense makes a lot more sense. The focus point of the emergency fund is liquidity and making as much as inflation and not more. So this is not the money from which you're going to get rich. Okay. This is the money which I keep so that I can sleep well at night. I have a secure, a feeling of security, which is the six times of my monthly expenses. Right. The second rule of budgeting is the 50, 30, 20. How many of you here have heard the 50, 30, 20 principle? Let's go. 40 people, 44 of us. Tell me, how many of you here have heard of this 50, 30, 20 principle in the chat box? Should the emergency fund be an FD? Yes. I have a few names here. It feels like we have more names. Yes, needs, wants, and savings. Yes. Feels like we have more names who have not heard of this. So this is to answer a simple question. How do I plan my money? How much should I be saving? How much should I be spending? Right? That's basically the principle. So how one can look at this is bucketize your income into three categories. As soon as you make some money which is coming into your bank account, you split it into needs, wants, and savings. The rule says 50% goes towards your needs. 30% goes towards your wants, 20% is going towards your savings. So if I was to look at it in a simple way, what should be my minimum saving rule? 20% of my income. If I was to be somebody who wants to really be more aggressive in my savings and build well, you can move this, start moving this upward from 20%. So say 30% or 40%. One of the uh, interesting things is that uh, if you want to retire, in your 40s, right, there's this fire movement, uh, which is financially independent, retire early. Uh, there, the principle says that from your first salary, you have to start saving 50% or more if you want to retire in your 40s. So that's just fun fact for anyone who's young here, who still has the time <laughs> and wants to follow that. So a high savings rate uh, starts helping you build a corpus, which can help you retire faster. Now, I thought let's talk about a little bit about compounding, right? So I'm saying every month save 20% of your income. So it's important for us to realize why or what impact this can have in our life, right? So say if I was to start by putting a number of, a flat number of 20,000 of monthly savings, okay? And I was to earn a return of, 8% on this. So I'm not looking at a very, very high aggressive return. I'm fairly moderate return that I'm expecting every year of 8% of this money. Now let's have some fun. So what do you think in five years, throw a number at me, whoever enjoys a little bit of numbers here. In five years, if I were to save every month 20,000 rupees, in five years, how much would I possibly have? Any guesses? Any numbers here? If I'm saving 20,000 every month for five years, how much would I have? I have one number. Nobody likes numbers in the room today, huh? Every month if I'm saving, yes. No, no, it's not even 1.2 crores. Bhi nahi hai. Five years may 20,000 <laughs> savings will take you to approximately 15 lakh. Okay, at a return of 8%. Now I'm liking this. Okay, we've got lots of answers. Now I continue this practice, simple discipline, financial discipline, and I'm able to save this money for 10 years. I'm going to make 37 lakhs. 15 years, 70 lakhs. And within 20 years, you have your 1.2 crore with not a very, you know, uh, a large push, 
or a high return, which is the power of compounding, which is the power of making that bucket. The 50, 30, 20 bucket is, is you know, theoretically very nice. But if you just start following it, uh, you can actually start building wealth without taking excessive risk, without having to do a lot of, you know, where, which products, et cetera, et cetera, right? So this is the power of having that little bit of monthly savings. I've left this question for you all to imagine that if you were able to do this and in say five years, you were able to accumulate 15 lakhs or 20 years later, you had that one crore. How can this impact your future? How can this be special for you? So I've left that for you all to think about that this is the power of compounding and regularly saving your money. Let's go to the next rule of thumb, which is in borrowing. Okay. So here I've picked a theme of buying your car or the car loan rule. This is the 24-10 principle. Okay. So the 24-10, now again a question. How many of us here have heard of this 24-10 principle? So 50-30-20 we have. What about the 24-10? Anyone here who wants to buy a car for themselves? No. The others have heard. No, no. Yes, you want to buy a car? Not heard of the rule? Okay. So let's do it. Yeah. Let's try to break down this rule. Okay. So this rule says that if you were to take a loan for buying your car, you've got to make sure that you do 20% as down payment, which means you will take a loan on the remaining 80% of the money, okay, of the car value. You take a loan for four years and you keep your EMI limited to 10% of your income. So please remember, like I said, this is a principle which makes for a healthy loan. The amount of money you should be spending on a car if you follow this principle, you're sitting in the, okay, this is a healthy loan bucket for me. It's not a, going to be a stressful buy for me. How can we use this? Okay, this is just numbers, right? But how do I practically uh, use this? So this is a fun little calculator, which I created because I want to know how much should I spend on my car, right? So that's typically, a, is it a common question for anybody who wants to buy a car? Can, can, can I actually afford a 20 lakh car? Can I afford a 35 lakh car? Can I afford a, is it, is it a valid question? Do you think so? Would you like to know how much should you spend on your car? This rule is actually going to be helpful for you to be able to identify how much do you have to spend on a car, right? So I broke this down actually into three parts. Okay, I broke this down into three parts. If a car is not a big deal for you, okay, if it's not a big deal, stick to 10% of your income. Like it's just a mode of transport, doesn't matter too much what car I drive, etc. If it's something that is important for you to have, you can push this limit slightly to 20% of your income. And if you love cars, like, you, yeah, I, this is the only big expense I'm going to make and I would love to have a great car. If that's what you feel about your car or the car that you want to buy, you can push, push this to 35% of your income. Okay. Why I did this? It's, it's a practical way of looking. So one is a theoretical way, a practical way of looking at how much loan I would like to take. The aim is to keep your total EMIs below 50% of your net income. This is something you can do as a family or individually, however you like it. Now I have a small little calculator, which I'd like to show only if you all say, yes, we want to see it. See, I, I love calculators, which you'll see, like if you come for more of our sessions, there'll always be a tool, a calculator, something like that. That's, do I have enough yeses? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Let's go. Let's do this. Can you all see the Excel on the screen? Yeah? Yes. Awesome. So the smart use of my 2410 principle goes like this. I feed in 
say my monthly income. So supposing I'm making 70,000 every month. Now I know that the ideal expense I said is 10%, right? Which means on my EMI, I can spend 7,000 rupees. With me till here, what can I afford? Down payment has to be 20%, which means the loan value is 80%. Simple. Now say here you put the car value. Supposing I want to buy a car, which is going to cost me say 15 lakhs. Okay. Which means I have to pull up a loan of around 12 lakhs, 80% of this, right? Now, assuming an interest rate or whatever interest rate is around right now, currently it's in the range of eight to eight and a half percent. Um, and for a period of four years, I've parked the calculator here. Let me even show you that, which is a cool online calculator, which helps me identify how much EMI will I have to pay, right? So let me show you this calculator as well. It's a very simple one. Oops. Sorry, sorry, wrong screen. Okay, this is an online calculator. So it tells me if I had to take a loan, so in our calculation, we wanted to take a loan of 12 lakhs, right? Okay, so I say 12 lakhs. I want to take the loan for four years. And I feed an interest here of 8.5%. And I ask it to calculate. So here it throws up the EMI. Can you see the EMI figure, everybody? approximately 30,000, 29,578, okay? So I go back to my calculator and I, I let's, let's feed this and see what happens. Yeah, approximately, I will be paying an EMI of say 30,000. Right. Now at the end, as a percentage of your income, it tells me that 43% of my income is going in this EMI, which means that I'm on the higher end of my loan bucket. If I really love this car is when I should spend this much money. Otherwise, it might be wiser for me to look at maybe a car which is in the lower range, which could be 12 lakhs or 10 lakhs. And you can work back and enjoy the calculator and play around, go check out the EMI, put it here and see whether it's worth it or not. Does it make sense? Interesting. Ever thought that you could use a rule to work backwards and see whether you can afford a car or not? Tell me yes, no. Maybe, not really. Yes. Yes. Okay, any questions on this? So I work backwards and I now have decided how much I can, uh, can we get this Excel? Hmm. Okay, that's, depends. I'm here to confirm that information. But if you want it, you send us some, uh, send us, uh, uh, I think she knows money team can get back and let us know if we can send it across, we will. Right. But was it useful? At least that was useful for me. That's how I use whether I need to figure out whether I can afford a car or not. Okay, so now you know how this principle actually, all these rules, how they actually can be applied to our real life. Theme number three, insurance. The common question I get, how much life insurance do I need? Okay, and while we all know that there are some um, specialized inputs which are required for someone to actually guide you exactly how much uh, you need, that will be based on your current income, your liabilities, goals for your children, how many dependents you have, et cetera, et cetera. The thumb rule here is eight to 10 times of your annual in-hand income, plus you factor in for any loans separately. So if you've taken a huge families, you've got a huge house loan or something, that has to be covered separately, okay? I thought, why 10? Why 10X? Has anybody ever thought or come across this rule, by the way, in the room? 40 people has... Uh, ever come across uh, 10x? No? I like that. Better to not take a loan. So and to cover up you know, inflation and all, I mean, for all these areas, right? Whether it be education or housing or your loans or whatever. 
yeah absolutely it will adjust it has to adjust for inflation it has to keep in mind right mm. uh, the rule itself has kept that in mind so i'm going to show you how right so that our dependents can survive for next 8 to 10 years after us right so again question i was like but show me the numbers right how does this rule work if anybody again if anybody in this room wants to see how does this rule work tell me i will show you i have it on the calculator again the why 10x and how will it you know how does it matter to my my life as a person uh, you know in in the family if i have dependents yeah i i love this i think all of you are like me you all like to see calculations and you all like to see the logic behind things right so just like we did the car rule there's also something which is called the life insurance rule calculator so here what you do is say uh our annual income is say let's say um 12 lakhs let's just put a number there right okay so this will automatically tell me that what's the ideal cover that i should have as a family would be 1.2 crores right that's 10 times of that now this rule assumes that 80% of this money that you've been earning is going into your expenses okay that's an assumption okay these are expenses that will keep you afloat that's a fair assumption which means out of this 12 lakh around 9 lakh 60000 every year you all are spending on the family's expenses which comes down to around 80000 per month okay with me till now okay so say if something were to happen um, to the bread earner and now i don't have an income and i have these expenses to pay what happens if i have this 1.2 crores cover so i get this 1.2 crores from the life insurance company all i do is maybe i park this at a 7% interest rate because right now i don't know what to do with this money i'm still figuring it out so i try to have something fairly safe where i can keep this money i keep this money for the next 15 years and adjust for inflation can you see even for the comfortably for next 15 years almost 90% of my family's expenses can continue to be funded from this money that's the reason why 10x that's the reason why everybody insists all the experts say please make sure you're adequately covered because that's how you'll make sure that your lifestyle doesn't change as much a second these 15 years is good enough time period for me to figure out now what what are the other sources of income that i can use to think of generate etc etc and hopefully if you have children this should be good enough for them to also have settled and uh, you know stand on their own two feet now does 10x make sense not when i just write it and tell you like listen um you need to have 10 times of your income but when i show it to you and you can see that actually i don't need to do much i just need to park that money somewhere securely and it starts feeding my monthly expenses that's the real power of having adequate life insurance did you understand this no didn't understand yes ankita didn't get this now does it make sense will you all go back and ask this question now if you all have dependents whether you have 10 times of cover or not on your annual income so rule number 3 is 10 times of your annual income let's talk about a rule on investments you know how much time will it take for my money to grow another very common question so here we are going to talk about the rule of 72 anybody heard of rule 72 today i am giving you lots and lots of rules huh? all of these thumb rules coming out rule 72 no i am very happy that a lot of you have not heard these rules huh, by the way so it's great i was nervous sab suna hai sabko pata hai aisa nahi okay so rule of 72 actually i use it practically whenever i see those lic ads i'm sure you all also see those ads uh, front page big ad in the paper it will say okay you will be able to uh, double your money in the next 20 years or after 20 years you'll get double of your return etc have you ever seen those ads which are always saying they claim to double up your money in in a period of time or is it just me only i see these things yeah yes so 
we see all this right somebody throws a number at the ma'am we can double your money you invest 10 lakh with us you will get double after 20 years or something so this rule was invested invented for only being able to calculate what is the return i actually make okay i'm doubling my money but always remember a wise way of looking at your investment is to say is, is it earning me more than inflation or not correct we need to be beating inflation we all know how important that is so how do i calculate when you give a number to me that this is going to double in 20 years how should i mentally or on a calculator on my phone just figure out what is the annual return that you're making on this so that's where rule of 72 comes into play years to double your money is equal to 72 divided by the rate of interest the other way to look at it is the rate of interest is equal to 72 divided by the number of years right so let's take a quick example if the interest rate is 9% and i invest 10000 how many years will it take for me to double my money 72 divided by 9 which is 8 years the other way to look at it if somebody tells me listen i will double your money in 8 years how much return am i making on that investment tell me i just somebody just says i will double your money in 8 years so now rule of 72 says what how many, how much interest are you making? Nine. So just do 72 divided by eight and you'll know the answer. Simple, right? So wherever you're getting these claims of doubling your money in X number of years, just do 72 divided by the number of years and there you have it. And the only thing that you check there, okay, now if I know the rate of return, now I can compare against other investments. So if an LIC is giving me six and a half or 7% return, can I put this money somewhere else where it might get better? Okay. So don't go fall for this double, double your money stuff. In addition, I'm going to pack another two rules with you for your uh, use. The rule of 114, which is the years to triple your money. So that's 114 divided by the rate of interest. In this case, 114 divided by 9 tells me I can triple my money in 12.6 years. And four times is 144. The years it takes for us to make four times of whatever we've invested is 144 divided by the rate of interest, which is telling me here that it'll take me 16 years to make 10,000 car, 40,000. Was this fun? So I always use this when somebody throws an ad at me or says, a lot of investor and advisors also say this, you'll double your money in this much time. Double. So this is the first rule which I go to when I'm calculating whether this is a good enough investment for me or not. So the most practical one here is your rule of 72. And this I've kept only for those in the room who really want to make that first score. Okay, this is called the 15-15-15 principle. 15,000 per month for 15 years at 15% per annum. But this is for an aggressive investor, somebody who wants to take high amount of risk so you're investing in stocks, you're investing in equity mutual funds, you're investing directly into small case, you pick up SIP system to do that, a systematic investment plan, and you invest 27 lakhs over the next 15 years, you'll make 73 lakhs as profit. That's the power of compounding. If you want to become a crorepati and you have 15,000 per month, well, that's your hack. 15 years, 15%, 15,000 per month. That's all it'll take to make your first growth. And the last one, I'm leaving you with lots of rules. Last one is a, um, a principle for retirement planning. How much should I invest? So if you're planning for retirement, how much should I invest in safe assets versus how much should I invest in high risk assets? So equity, equity becomes your high risk assets like your stocks or your mutual funds. Safe becomes your uh, government schemes, your fixed deposits, bonds, etc. How much proportion should go where for retirement? Risky investment should be 100 minus your age. So if I am 30, it simply says 70% of my money, which I'm planning for retirement investment, should go towards high risk investments, which is your equity bucket. If I'm at age 60, 100 minus 60 means that I have to invest 40% into this, there's an error here, but I will have to invest 40% into equity. That's a very simple, but this is really oversimplified. Retirement planning, caveat here, requires a little bit of an expertise. 
but this is again just planning uh, thumb of rule right rule of thumb which is just are you on the right track broadly or not i seriously do recommend speaking to an expert for retirement planning because it's it does require a lot of rebalancing and planning uh, you know a lot of lot more expertise in this so those were our rules across all five themes um and just again reflect back not one size fits all these are just for you to reflect try to build be consistent and get started and check whether you're on the right track or not i want you all to tell me which was the wow rule for you out of all the rules that we did in the last a uh, few minutes which was the one which was a wow for you that i did not know this and i might actually use this one for me it was the um uh, the it, the number of years it takes you to double triple whatever quadruple your money and then you the rule of 72 the rate of interest and is that rate of interest you know higher than market and uh, inflation so i just calculated and um, almost made a decision on something i'd been holding off because i was not able to sort of figure it out wow um, that was my wow one from wow. today awesome i'm seeing a lot of answers just of rule 1 as a okay i'm going to if you all want i will quickly repeat all the rules we have time i can take questions as well um so for budgeting the 50 30 20 principle which says 50% in your needs bucket 30% in your wants bucket and 20% to be saved every month so how much should i save every month 20%. If I want to make a lot more wealth, then try to move upwards from 20%. So that becomes like your benchmark. You're measuring your savings rate against that. Borrowing rule, we did the car loan rule. How much should I invest? How much loan should I take for my car or what is the kind of car I can actually buy? So you have to plan for 20% should be your down payment. The loan tenure should be for 4 years. and 10% is the maximum monthly emi maximum monthly spend on your emi etc cetera, etc cetera, for your car if you absolutely love cars you can pull this up to 30 35% of your income if you have no other loans and you really love cars then you can push it up to 50% but not more than that okay so 50% is your hard cut uh if you earn 50000 rupees you cannot have an emi of more than 25000 that's that's bad like real bad okay insurance principle says that how much life insurance should we have as a family 10 times of your family's annual income is the adequate amount of cover i showed you with a calculator that even if that money was to just be parked in a fairly safe place earning 6 to 7% it would be sufficient to run your current expenses your maintain your lifestyle uh, for the next 15 years investing we did two rules we did rule of 72 which says how do i figure out uh, what is the rate of interest um, of a certain product whether say this is double etc or if i want to figure out the other way around that am i investing somewhere how much time will it take to double so you do the 72 divided by the rate of interest that tells you the answer or even 72 divided by number of years whichever way right 15 15 15 15000 rupees for 15 years at 15% gets you your first crore so this is for the aggressive investors in the room who want to have some target that how much return do i need to make every year to get to that magical number so there it is and finally for planning your retirement 100 minus age suggests um that mix which we are confused how much in safe how much in high risk products so take the high risk product should be 100 minus age that is the percentage so if i am 30 years old 70% of my retirement investment i can do in a high risk equity mutual fund or stock market etc the remaining 30% i am going to do in something which is safer so which means as i get older i move towards safer assets compared to when i was younger so those were the rules in summary and i'm seeing lots of responses on which was the wow rule i got the rule of 72 car loan insurance borrowing 10x rule of 72 rule of 72 this um, uh, so all those who miss the recording will be up on the channel please go back and i've done the calculator as well there so you'll be able to catch up there 
<laughs> my brief right now is wow. Thank you. Carlo was a favorite. All right, we're open to questions. This is a little offbeat theme. It's not the regular one. So I thought it will be fun to know what you all think. Any questions? And you, if you have questions, you can unmute yourself and ask to Neha. Any questions? Either I've given them like too much information today or it's like, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know. Why are there no questions? I'm concerned. I have a question. Oh, um, thanks. Like through you, but it's for the audience. Um, it's, it's like, how many of you are thinking uh, to go back and uh, make some investments or uh, think about, okay, next time I'm buying the car, I need to think like this. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a question. Let's have a conversation. Um, how are you thinking about it? Um, and I'll give you an example. I've been thinking about an investment and I knew the that they are quadrupling the income, the money. And I will invest X amount and it'll be four, uh, four times in, in sort of X number of years. And I kept asking the person, okay, so what's the return? And I didn't have the time or didn't think very quickly to calculate it myself. So I just did it now. And I said, oh, okay, that's, very much similar to the annual inflation rate that we have in India, right? So now I'm a little bit positive. So now I'm asking more questions. Um, so how is it going for, for, for you know, the participants here and especially the repeat participants, if you've taken any action already in the last four weeks? Any action at all? Has anybody saved 100 rupees, 200 rupees? Have started planning? And India also has digital banking. It shows you when you're paying your bills, it actually shows you your pie chart that every time how much money is going into, you know, your different types of expenses. Do you look at that? Does anybody look at that pie chart? And there's an annual view as well. I, I, yeah. do, but... I do. Uh, yeah, Simran, uh, I think uh, we had the help of an uh, investment banker who was actually doing this for us. Uh, and like we started investing almost 20 years back. I am now reaching 50, right? So we started uh, investing somewhere around when I got married around 28 or something. So but from that time, we started investing. And so right now, uh, like some of the insurances have completed 20 years and money has started follow, flowing in, right? Which we are using for education of our children. So that is meeting our expenses and whatever income we are currently getting is flowing into further investments uh, in form of SIP or mutual funds or whatever. And uh, at that income generated will further play for, I mean, pay for our retirement plan. But uh, then which uh, which fund or thing is doing better or, you know, um, how, do I have an option to select something else? So that one is something which I'm not really educated and I'm trying to, you know, get to do that. I do get statements from NSDL and from my bank also as to how each of these funds are performing and, you know, how much is the growth rate. And so I'm trying to interpret that now. <laughs> Great. Um, and it's great that you have somebody who's, you know, supporting you on your um, investments. Yeah. We also exactly. have a you know, minister here who help um, also um, sort of individuals and um, friends. So feel free to um, uh, take the help. I think there's a question here in the chat which says, is it safe to invest in discount broking or P2P lending? Sondarya Lakshmi who's asked the question. Let me take that. Okay. So uh, let me break it into two parts. One is discount broking. What is discount broking? Basically, it's uh, one second. Um, they have I request please everybody to go and mute. Yeah, back to you now. Yeah. So 
discount broking is not it's not a way of investing it's a um, you know a kind of um, you can say these are trading platforms which are built online which are which give you cheaper rates to buy and sell on the stock market right so um, is it safe to invest through a broker like azeroda for example is called a discount broker because they have uh, revolutionized the industry now they charge zero brokerage fee etc so is it safe to invest through platforms like those yes if they are in the top 4 5 in the country yes there's no problem p2p lending is a um it's a, that's a new age investment instrument which basically means i'm it's it's peer to peer lending which means if you know neha cannot get a bank loan for whatever reasons um sundarya says okay fine i'm going to lend you some money and uh, there'll be a certain interest rate fixed on that and you will pay me back after a certain number of years right this is called peer to peer lending so what these platforms are doing is they are trying to match um you they try to give you a profile of this person of neha they will tell you okay this is her history this is what she needs the money for um typically these are people who either are not being served by banks for some reason so remember that which means that there is some amount of risk involved here why is this person maybe they don't have any collateral uh, maybe their credit history has not been so great maybe simply that the amounts that they're looking for uh, are too little for somebody to fund them right now right so um in my view p2p lending is evolving in india right now there are platforms which are coming up but as an investor um this would be more suitable for someone who is uh, a little bit higher in their risk taking ability one and second uh, we can actually plan something where we actually show you what could be the criteria in which your it has to be an educated and informed decision you start you've got to try to understand um how this works it's like building a portfolio right you will not only invest in one person you've got to look at multiple factors and then build a portfolio of multiple people you're investing in but the long story short it's for someone who can take higher amount of risk okay so if you i would not suggest allocating a large proportion of your money to all, all of these high risk investments because um they market them as guaranteed etc cetera, etc cetera, but nothing is guaranteed it's lending to somebody uh who might not have a great credit history right so you've got to keep uh you've got to be careful on that mm -mm. i have another question how do we track the performance of mutual funds and to know if it will meet my goal okay i think we'll plan a session for mutual funds it's hard for me to kind of answer this uh, but yeah there are multiple factors that you can look at to identify whether this fund is doing well or not how will you know typically what you need to check for there are calculators i think in the coming sessions we'll run you through more calculators the way to identify this is to do a math and say okay if i was the way i was showing you right if you were to do 15000 every month at 15% now if that's your goal your goal is to hit that 1 crore all you've got to do is make sure every year your your mutual fund portfolio is making 15% if it's not you've got to go back and reflect if it's doing more than 15% great you're going to get there faster right so um you you have to build these little benchmarks and then you will be able to identify uh, like i said 15000 15% so 15% is your benchmark and then you can start identifying whether this will help you hit your goal so another session suma in summary there's another session right there in that question what are uh, safe assets okay so safe assets would be any sort of investments which are giving you a guaranteed return okay like please check actually ki kya hai actually guarantee or if it is a assurance of a guaranteed return so for example some of these um, so bonds for example if you invest in a government bond or a public sector unit bond upfront it tells you how much interest you are going to get right if you are investing in a, in a government scheme again it will give you an idea of how much return you are going to make all those fall into your safe assets your fixed deposit will tell you how much you are going to make um so and now there are also some of these investment insurance policies so to speak which people take for you know maturity benefit even they give you an idea 
how much you're going to make after you know 10 years or 15 years that's some sort of an assurance built in there so those will fall under your um, safer assets where there's an assurance of return just before we wrap uh, you know if you want to set up a one on one with us have a conversation about your money situation you can scan or we will share the uh, link that you can book your free 15 minute slot with us and i'm leaving with you with uh, two two uh, leaving you with two videos we'll send this across as links uh, one is uh, a very interesting one where this uh, you know this couple down south they have been saving small amounts they run a very small little coffee shop and they've been saving small amounts and have traveled the world using those small savings so that's a very inspirational video and the second is something which i found extremely cute if you all have seen shakuntala devi there is a scene in which uh, she's being asked a question about uh, how much uh, salary this gentleman is going to make and she does that uh, the compounding uh, calculation there and then so that that scene is also just showcasing that a small amount just doubling every single day can lead up to a massive amount of money that's the power of compounding so if you all enjoy watching these uh, videos i'm sure you'll have fun watching these as well so that was that from my end thank you again i think another power pack sessions right we will agree that agree with that um, and I'm sure everyone has to go back and probably re-watch this session, um, <laughs> learn some of the concepts again to remember. I'm still doing my calculations in my head. Uh, so great. Um, and I think we have our uh, polling question. So let's launch that with you. Yes, I just launched it. So and, uh, people who are asking for the recording link on chat, please be aware it would be uploaded on our YouTube channel. So if you go to Aspire for Her, there is a C She Knows Money playlist. We put all the recordings after the session on that playlist. And then um, Neha um, and team also shares um, their sessions recording on the Womanista channel as well. I, I am very curious to know because I think it's important for future sessions. Do you all enjoy these calculators or do they really intimidate you? This is just a research question. Just yeah. for my information. Just put some yeses in the chat if you yes, do. Or... No, like, yes, no. So it's important. Like, tone it down, Neha. <laughs> you love it. Like, where, where are we on this? I have two yeses, which is quite not so great. It's coming. Oh, yes, the calculation. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yay. Yay. So you got it. You're doing good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, then. yes. Awesome. So we keep them, okay. we keep them going. Uh, let's have Vidya wrap up the call and also share the summary of our results. How are they looking? Yes. So the Second question was, uh, do you think this session has helped you better understand money management? So 37% of uh, audience have said, yes, I have clarity and feel uh, secure already. And 58% uh, partially new things are brought to my attention. Don't worry, you're on the right track. Uh, and 5% still uncertain. Again, the same answer, do not worry, you're on the right track. And we are having a host of sessions for you planned uh, at uh, She Knows Money. And the next session is going to happen on the 15th of December on uh, goal setting. So it's going to be done by Anu Seth from Paid Forward. So we will all, uh, we would love to see you all there as well. And yes, we are having more sessions with Neha as well in the coming weeks. So, yeah, over to you. And we'll soon also share the next year schedule once we've yeah. um, sort of agreed with that. And um, we are trying our best to have a surprise on the final week of the year. So stay tuned.
you can now have your new year, but before new year, we're going to um, learn some more tricks of uh, wealth building. I think somebody wrote in the chat earlier that it's easy to make money, but growing is a challenge. Yeah. It's very right because we have, as women, made a lot of progress um, to be in the workforce. A lot of women are making a lot of money, but now we need to learn how to grow and create uh, either passive incomes or um, you know support for incomes like Sri Lata shared. Um, so we have to grow the money. And Neha uh, and She Knows Money Initiative have some very action-oriented plans in the future. Um, we are just sort of getting started with the basics and ensuring that as we grow the community, new members join, there is content available that people can catch up. But uh, rest assured, we will get into executing and making money together. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Uh, I think with this, we are on time and we wind up the session. Thank you so much for joining. And please do spread the word. Do join for all our sessions. And as Simran said, we have, uh, you know, the next three weeks are also packed with a lot of good stuff for you. And 2023 is going to be very, very interesting. So have a great evening, all of you. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you, everybody. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Neha. Thank you.